Can we come back to you and then answer that? Okay. Okay, thanks. You can circulate, maybe Brian, that to, to everybody. Motion number one, uh, Claire O'Connor. You've waited a long time for this motion. I've waited a long time, and uh, it was it was deferred on the last occasion because I wanted to be top of the list with this motion because I think it's the it's it's the, the issue that I certainly get the most correspondence on, and it's and it's a huge problem. Um, I've said before, Sandy Mount is under siege, and I decided to put down a motion. Um, whereby debate might be fostered. Um, and the motion I had was, what are we going to do about Sandy Mount? And anyone who represents the area will know um, that there's you know, difficulty in terms of the lack of a traffic managed plan, difficulty because of diverted traffic in the last couple of months. There's, there's changes to the Sandy Mount area. There's going to be changes to the port. There's any number of issues all coming together. The difficulty was that my motion was too loose in terms of language and that there was emails back and forward and I was asked to give a little bit more context, but I suspected what would happen was that in giving context, I actually wasn't doing justice to the issues at hand. Um, so the report and the reply that I've got from management, I, I read it and I get the sense of, do you not get it? Because what, what, what has happened is that we're, we're we're not looking at the problem in a holistic way. I'm going to give you two brief examples and then I'll get to the point. I've put down that part of the problem in Sandy Mount is the HEVs coming through it. And I know that that's going to get a response which says, well, that's a guard issue. Another example I gave of the difficulties with the traffic, for example, coming along Tritonville Road is that there was burst water mains. And I think it's all part of the same problem, which was the, the extra traffic caused the water mains to, to be a difficulty and so on. And obviously then the reply that I got was, well, call Irish Water. And so call Irish Water, call the guards, call your local councillor, who's in charge here? I think we need an overall, we need a holistic, proactive approach in partnership with the community of Sandy Mount. We need to have conversations. We don't need to just call Irish Water when something happens on Tritonville Road or call the guards when a HGV goes the wrong way or try to bring up about the, the difficulty with the island at the South East Area meeting. There's no overall plan. And I know, you know, Councillor Gagan has his hand up without preempting what he's going to have to say. I support the fact that he wants a task force. So is it our plan here to just hang on and hope for the task force? Or are we going to be more proactive than that? But I really don't want to leave here today without a plan for Sandy Mount or a sense of what direction we're going to go next. It is under siege at the moment. I'm not going to dictate um, the issues or try and put parameters around them. We all know what they are. Um, and in fact, you know, by, by actually limiting them into the motion, I'm probably not doing them justice. But I'll hear what the other councillors have to say. I'd love if we get, could get some kind of plan in place today. Thanks, Claire. Uh, Claire Byrne? Hold hand, sorry. Okay, thank you. If people could take down their hands, it would be helpful. Uh, James, James Gagan. Sorry, sorry. Uh, thanks, Chair, and thanks to uh, Councillor O'Connor for putting this motion on the um, on on the floor. I think it's very helpful. Uh, look, um, uh, uh, as Councillor O'Connor thought I would raise, I am going to raise the task force and. Uh, we had a meeting that Councillor Lacey and I attended uh, with officials uh, a good while ago now, where it was represented to us at that meeting by the relevant senior officials that we, as all councillors in the South East area, would receive a draft terms of reference for that task force for Sandy Mount in replies to questions from me, uh, this, pro this uh, draft terms of reference has been promised at, on successive area committee meetings, yet hasn't been furnished to us. This is absolutely no criticism of the area office who are doing their level best to support this task force. Um, but I wonder, can we have an answer from Carl or from Brian? You know, what is the status? Like we were given clear promises uh, from officials that we would receive a term of, of reference. As we know, the OPW have agreed to sit on this task force at the SAMRA re meeting, the recent Resident Association of SAMRA, the local Garda superintendent came up to me after the meeting and he made clear that on Garda Siakona would like to sit on this task force, uh, Airgrid, all of the relevant entities are in agreement. We're just waiting for the local authority to get this up and running. Uh, so I really would like to see an update. And I do think, uh, Councillor O'Connor, that this could be the, um, 
this, this could at least be the starting point to get to get our arms around all of the various things that are taking place in Sandy Mount and work with the community, uh, like we've done even on small projects, the pedestrianisation measures to try and uh, uh, deliver better um, uh, a better degree of services for our community. Thanks. Thanks, James. Uh, Hazel Chu. Thanks, Dermot. Uh, listen, I, I, Carl, I know we spoke about this, and I, I know I spoke to Claire and, and James about this, and we were actually all at a summer meeting recently as well, and I think the councillors were very united in the front that there are certain things that need to uh, be acted quickly on for, for Sandy Mount, because every other area has issues as well but for Sandy Men, I think they they suddenly feel like uh, there, there is a couple that are all coming at the same time and especially if you look at uh, flood defenses and the flooding and then the 3, FE, uh, 3 FM plans it, it becomes as if uh, the, the community feels like well they're, they're a bit left behind so in relation to the task force I, I support uh, Claire's motion and I had supported uh, James task force motion but if the council cannot provide the task force as suggested then what can they provide what is the, the, the compromise here is it the list of um, items that need to be prioritised, for example, flooding, for example, traffic. How do we prioritise them and make sure they do get fixed instead of just highlighting it when something goes wrong to be fixed? Because there is, I, I think it's it's become pretty apparent that things will only get done when they are raised rather than there's a pre-planning process to it so if there if carl if you're saying to us well listen this is where we find it difficult to have a task force because we we don't know who's in charge of it we don't know where their authority comes from then tell us how do we work with yourselves uh, from a council point of view to fix the issues and my main one will be the flooding more than anything else because that is what the residents are asking for so thanks Thanks, Hazel. Uh, look, just for my own part, I agree with what's been said already. Uh, there's a lot of issues, but in a way, traffic is an, is an overriding one in, in, in different uh, ways. The impact on the area, the fact that Strand Road is a pleasant, a really pleasant place. And if I lived in Strand Road, I'd probably want it to stay the, the way it is because it's a lot more pleasant than it was. But the trouble is that there's lots of different conflicting views. And what we need to do is find some way uh, to bring to give people an opportunity to try and, you know, come together on a response, because there's no point in sort of benefiting one road at the, at the expense of another road. There's no point in implementing a scheme that doesn't have a broader um, degree of, of, of acceptance. And I think there are a lot of good suggestions out there in the community. So one, I think we should keep on pushing for the task force on the, the big issues. Now, whether we need another opportunity to meet, another forum, another workshop, another, I don't know what, but we need to find some way to bring people together. You know, maybe initially a very small group of people, one or two councillors, one or two people from the Residents Association, a couple of traffic officials to try and hammer out something together. Um, I'm really wide open uh, as to how we would deal with this. So one manager, if we could push as far as we can the establishment of the, of the task force, because I think that is important for the big infrastructural projects, but we also need a plan for the area. Uh, and I'm quite prepared to work, you know, in any way I can on this, to work with other councillors on it, but we need to find that opportunity to bring people together. Councillor McCartan. Uh, thanks, Chair, and I'm fully in support of the task force as I am in favour of uh, Councillor O'Connor's motion. Um, the divisions now that are coming in Sandy Mount, divisions coming to the fore over the issue of Strand Road, the way it was, the way it is now, and the problems being caused in the other roads, uh, particularly around the Tritonville Road area where noise pollution, environmental pollution, it reminds me some way of what happened on Belmont Avenue prior to us coming together and what seemed like an irresolvable issue on Belmont Avenue was there was an outcome when all councillors from all persuasions and the community agreed on a uh, 
resolution to the problems there on Belmont Avenue, which I think will become long term. What I don't want to see in Sandy Mount is these uh, communities pitted against each other because when you examine Strand Road, Strand Road is an arterial road, always was, always will be, with access to the port tunnel. It, to my mind, can never go back to being the way it is at now at the moment for the, for, the, for the works being completed by Irish Water. So um, I think it does take something of uh, a task force to um, deal with the issue because um, the items are myriad and complex and um, it's, it's one of the one of the most difficult issues to solve and it's not getting any easier when we find out what the final judgment from the court judgments are uh, things may be clarified to a certain extent but um, for the moment uh, I, I don't want to see deeply ingrained distrust rising up in the community between different groups who have um, who are, find themselves pitted against each other. Thank you. Thanks, Paddy. Maddox, and then we go back to the Thank manager. you very much. I mean, yeah, I mean, this issue has been ongoing for quite some time, but it's no different than the many issues within the city. You saw Mr. Brendan O'Brien giving you a very disappointing overview of what's going to not take place uh, in uh, uh, um, uh, College Green because of the buses and the cars. In every single area where we attempted to address this particular issue, particularly on the north side of the city, all those cars are going somewhere else. They're going into the East Wall area and they're causing huge problems. The same applies here. Which, whichever way you look at that situation, it's going to have a major problem because the problem is very simple. We're not getting rid of any cars. <laughs> We're just simply moving them off one road onto another road to facilitate a rather peculiar situation, you know what I mean, that has taken place throughout the city. But in the meantime, as I said, we're getting rid of none of the pollution and we're getting none of the cars. Certainly, I would suggest that everybody wait until the courts make their decision, which should be very soon indeed, when they will issue their findings in relation to that. In the meantime, there are issues within the Sandy Mount area, and there are issues that are very positive, and then there are some that are very negative, because certain individuals f seem fit to issue diktats on behalf of residents, when in actual fact there's no note to say who those residents are. The vast majority of people in Sandy Mount want Sandy Mount returned to the way it was and want the rat runs to stop. That's what they want. We had a process. Uh, Councillor Lacey, which you probably all remember, in relation to the temporary works, there was a consultation process, there was a huge process, it came to null and void. So in relation to the task force, I certainly think it's worth having a task force, but I also think that the task force has to bear in mind what's happening throughout the city and what's happening throughout the area. And the one aspect of this is, is the motor car. The vast amount of people in Sandy Mount support the reinstatement of the Sandy Mount Road. There's huge issues coming down the, 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 the line, and as I say, in relation to the recent publication of letters and the responses to those letters, and in, rela in relation to the, to the Irish Times, rather one-sided argument, these are the things that cause the division. So for us as councillors, within the southeast area, we have a big task in front of us, and the task is, is to make it accessible, safe, you know what I mean, and usable for everybody, not just the residents. But we can't just simply railroad in the MTA policy or the policies of Irish Rail. We have to take into consideration the vast amount of residents out there who themselves have a fairly robust plan by way of the cycling infrastructure that would take place on the, on the beach side of Strand Road. And also, the issues in relation to, as I say, the environment. There's more damage being done out there with the waste to energy facility poison than anything else. So I support the motion. I'd like to second the motion. I put my name to the motion. And let's move along from this situation. And let's not try and undermine the process that's taking place. Thank you. OK, we've had a discussion. We all know there are problems. I think the motion was good for pro provoking a discussion, a discussion that's needed, because our job, I think, the difference between local government and national politics is local government is very pragmatic. Uh, we have problems, and we have to try and deal with them. I don't know if the manager wants to make any response before I go back to Councillor O'Connor. Yeah, um, James Nolan was working on preparing draft terms of reference in re for the task force. So I'll speak to James, and we'll come back in advance of the next area committee meeting. Councillor O'Connor. Um, 
Yeah, thanks very much, Brian. I think that that'd be very reasonable and it would be a good way forward. Um, I agree, and I won't delay this, I'm conscious of the time. I agree with, with all speakers um, that have addressed the issues of complexity here. One thing that I don't want to go unchecked is that this is a simple solution um, or that this is a simple problem or that Sandy Mount is like every other area of the city. And, I, and the response I give to that, and a lot of people say to me, just because I represent Sandy Mount, well, what's so different about Sandy Mount? That's happening all over the city. And it's not, because there's a particular boundary line of the Dart and Sandy Mount. It's the main arterial route to the Port Tunnel. So it, there are very specific parts. But aside from all of those arguments, there is one overriding issue here, which is the absence of a traffic management plan. And in the absence of that, the traffic is being diverted down what are unsuitable streets. So it's a hope for the best scenario. And the frustrations and the division that Councillor McCartan raises are also what is, what, what, what is included in my wording. What are we going to do about sentiment? Because I don't want that division to unravel and to, to become um, ingrained in the sentiment community, yeah. which is a great place to live. So that's at the forefront of my mind, the fact that the forum for this discussion and division is taking place within the letter section of the Irish Times. So I think from that point of view, we need to be proactive. I accept the manager is going to be proactive and I, and I respect that. And I look forward to, to seeing where that goes in terms of getting those terms of reference and ultimately arriving here at a traffic management plan. We don't have to be on the same place politically. We don't have to be in agreement about the issues. To, to decide on a traffic management plan. We were able to do that in Belmont Avenue and we came from completely different perspectives. This is achievable. I wanted to move forward. Thanks for your time, Chair. Thanks, uh, Claire. Is there a value in us having a meeting of councillors uh, with those terms of reference as the core part of the agenda, but let's see what you know, unravels out of that conversation between now and the next area committee meeting? I mean, I'm yeah, happy I to facilitate. Yeah, that's it. a good idea. Good idea, Dermot. Okay, yeah. well, let, let, let's, let's agree to do that, okay? And we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, thanks, sir. Because I'd like to move on. Okay, thanks, everybody. Motion agreed. Um, well, the, the question has been asked, and we've said what we're going to do. Okay, exactly. motion, motion number uh, 